Did you know that the Soviet Union created an organization meant to aid class war political prisoners around the world? Those punished for their radical views, communists and those non-party aligned, captives of capitalism. Let's talk about it. Assalamu alaikum comrades, it's been a while. Known mostly in English as the International Red Aid, though more commonly you'll see its abbreviation in Russian, the MOPR. In Russian, translating to the International Organization of Assistance to Fighters for the Revolution. I think one can understand why this sort of aid organization is needed, not just to help the prisoners, but to help their families as well. First, I want to discuss why I think it's topical right now. So as a collector of Soviet pins and badges, and someone who consumes a lot of the propaganda and political artwork from the Soviet Union, I often come across all these different organizations or badges and art referencing them. And over the past few months, I keep coming across the MOPR, and it's really been sticking with me, because I think we're really going to need something like that again, if not already needing it right now. I was thinking about the TikTok hearings a couple months ago, where we literally heard regurgitated McCarthyist slogans, you know, perpetrated by US elected officials. Do you know of any other employees that work for ByteDance that are part of the Chinese Communist Party? You don't know how many, but you acknowledge many must be card-carrying members of the CCP, right? It is only TikTok that is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. All these other social media companies are not. Mr. Chu, do you agree that TikTok is controlled by the CCP? Even if it is not happening yet, it could in the future. The long-term goal of the Chinese Communist Party is the demise of the American power, and that starts with our youth. Or even in recent weeks out of Florida, mock travel advisories, warning socialists and communists not to visit, and a new claim from DeSantis about what he promises to do to the radical left if he's elected president, appealing to a real section of the population who agrees with him. It seems like anti-communism is only ramping up more and more as time goes on. A whole new beast, both very similar and unlike anti-communism of the past. Just as sinister and more sinister. Sorry, my cat is really needy and demands to be pet. So the idea of an organization that is meant to aid people imprisoned or harmed due to their association with communism or the radical left really sounds appealing as it might be needed in the near future. So I think it's great to look back on these examples, to pull inspiration from, to learn from, and to just keep in mind in the back of our heads in case things get not great. Right, this year? Right. So the International Organization for Assistance to the Fighters of the Revolution was created on November 30th of 1922 at the Fourth World Congress of the Comintern on the Initiative of the Russian Society of Bolsheviks, Former Political Prisoners and Exiled Settlers. Notoriously, one of the chairmen of the MOPR was Clara Zetkin. At the time, nearly 10 million Soviet citizens were donating money to this organization. There was a massive want to aid revolutionary fighters, prisoners of capitalism, languishing in foreign dungeons. The need to create such a society was really seen in the 1920s, where it became evident that for now there wouldn't be a worldwide revolution, that it would just be the Soviets creating the socialist state and experimenting and learning. There were massive anti-communist campaigns around the globe, and many communists being imprisoned. The Great Soviet Encyclopedia described this organization as follows. The MLPR unites itself the broad masses of workers, peasants, and small employees without distinction of their party affiliation to help the imprisoned fighters of the revolution, their families and children, as well as the families of fallen comrades. By 1934, there were already 70 national branches of the MOPR, and 4 million people outside of the Soviet Union were members as well. By 1924, it was already in 19 countries. By 1932, 62 countries. One of its first international members was Spain, as it aided in the Spanish Civil War. In the United States, they had the International Labor Defense, or the ILD, Established in 1925, they were the official American branch of the MOPR. So Marxist.org actually has a great write-up about this organization if you're interested in reading further about the American branch. As it says, 
Uh, the ILD began with a discussion between James P. Cannon and Big Bill Haywood in Haywood's room in Moscow in 1925. Cannon recalls that the old fighter who was exiled from America with a 20-year-old sentence handing over him was deeply concerning about the persecution of workers in America. He wanted to have something done for the almost forgotten men lying in jail all over the country. A plan was arrived at for a nonpartisan body that would defend any member of the working class movement without regard to personal political views. Any working class activist who came under the thumb of persecution by the capitalist legal system would be supported legally, morally, and financially. After negotiations in Moscow, an agreement was reached outlining the procedure for organizing the ILD and outlining its relationship to two Comintern related international aid organizations, the International Red Aid, or the MOPR, and the International Workers Relief. They wanted to focus on countering groups like the Ku Klux Klan and to defend high-profile and controversial cases. It essentially became the legal branch of the Communist Party in the US. Overall, the Red Aid and the ILD had some massive cases. Even Antonio Gramsci, of all people. As I mentioned, one of my first introductions to this organization was through badges and pins. So I thought I'd show you what some of those were. The first badge of the Soviet MOPR was for members of the society. It had the shape of a pentagon symbolizing the five continents, a globe entangled in chains, and in the upper half, a rising sun as a symbol of freedom. The second badge made for the organization was for the most active members in the society. This badge is very similar as the first, but it's now surrounded by a wreath of oak branches and wheat. And at the top is a red banner that says activist. Over the years, many badges would be made by this society, but a common theme was the image of a window of a prison cell from which a prisoner's hand is stretched out clutching a red handkerchief. Sadly, on February 12th of 1948, the Soviet branch of the MOPR would be dissolved, having completed its tasks. Did it? Did they not foresee how aggressive McCarthyism would become? or the things we still have happening today. And a lot of people don't know about this organization or remember it. The only sign of it remaining for many decades in the Soviet Union were streets named after the organization, Moprovsky Streets. Upon further investigation, there is currently an organization called the International Red Help, though they seem to focus more on arming and funding resistance um, rather than legal cases, but it's interesting that they exist with this namesake. So that's worth looking further into. Have you heard of them? So today we may have some organizations that are kind of similar. Would they really take on a case of someone who's a full-fledged communist? I don't know. There's plenty of organizations who would consider that bad optics or something. Especially with the ramped up anti-communism today, organizations that rely on public funding want to keep the public's opinion of them decent. And communism is more and more controversial these days. Yet again, like we learn nothing from history. But what do you think? Have you heard of this organization before? Do you know of others like it? Can you foresee a near future where comrades and their families will need this sort of assistance due to imprisonment or worse? I'd like to know your predictions or if things are already that bad where you are. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have to say on that topic. I want to apologize for the long absence and less frequent uploads across the internet from me. I've been struggling pretty hard with my brain lately and let me scooch up to you and get personal. But yeah, I've been struggling pretty hard with my brain lately. I know, like, ADHD is a stupid excuse, but sometimes you really get stuck and demotivated and just unable to, to function. It's crazy how brains work. But I've been dealing with that since before, right before Ramadan started. So I'm so sorry about my cat. She's horny. Anyways, I've been working really hard lately to improve my mental capacity and my motivation. I'm, I'm working out, I'm eating healthier, I'm trying different methods. I just want to thank you for sticking around even when my uploads have been less frequent. It's just been hard and I don't have a good like physical excuse to why. It's literally just like my brain not working. <laughs> like I really wanted to have um, those badges for you to show, but uh, they're quite expensive, at least those that aren't copies. So fortunately I don't have like a spare 50, 70, 80 dollars laying around for like single individual badges. Yeah, thank you for watching this far and letting me ramble on. I really appreciate you guys. 
you are too nice to me and I just your support means the world especially when my brain isn't working and I'm feeling down and bad about myself so thank you genuinely your positivity has helped me make positive decisions please be inspired by history goodbye